What's going on everyone? Let's talk about optimization, okay? So the simplest way to think about optimization is that you're going to be minimizing or maximizing a function. Basically what you were doing when you were assessing critical values, okay? And so I'll write that down here so that you can kind of allude to it in your mind, right? And we said for critical values, right? Given any function f of x, we said that the way to find a critical value is to one, take the derivative of that function and then set it equal to zero, right? That was the first step. The second step was to solve for your values of x in this case, or your critical values. And then once you were able to find those, to assess them to see if they were minimum or if they were maximum, right? And so just pictorially or visually, um, we said that if your function f of x is represented by this curve here, right? We said that the critical values are going to fall where the slope is zero. So at these three points, because we said the slope or m, right? Is gonna be represented by rise over run or delta y over delta x, right? And so at these points, we said that if we were to drop a tangent line to these points, they would be perfectly horizontal. And so they would have no rise or vertical change, meaning that the slope here would be zero. And these were your critical values, okay? And so in assessing whether these are minimum or maximum, we said that we can do the derivative test, right? So if we approach these points from the left, right, if we come up from the left, we expect the slope here would be positive because the function or the trend is increasing and so your slope is going to be positive. As you leave this point to the right, the trend is decreasing, right? It's actually falling. And so the slope here is going to be negative. And we said whenever you see this trend of a positive followed by a negative slope, this is going to represent a maximum. And the opposite for these pit or trough points, right? Where if we were to approach this point from the left, the trend is decreasing, it's falling. And so the slope here would be negative, but as it leaves towards the right from this point, right, the trend is increasing, it's rising. And so the slope is going to be positive. And we said that if you have a negative slope coming in, positive slope going out, this represents a minimum. So today we're gonna use this concept in terms of a word problem, okay? And so the number one thing for word problems, tip for you, right, is that you want to, one, be able to draw out what the word problem is describing, if possible, and that's what I did over here, okay? So you wanna do this for yourself if you can. And then also, you wanna be able to read through these problems and sift out useful information. So in this case, let's read through and go over it together. So a farmer has 2,400 feet of fencing and wants to fence off a rectangular field that borders a straight river. He needs no fence along the river. What are the dimensions of the field that has the greatest area, okay? And so this image over here represents the river in blue and this is the fence that they're talking about, okay? So they want a rectangular fence that borders a river and just to be clear, no fence along the river. So this side does not have any fencing. So it's only these three sides. And let's call the sides of this partial rectangle, right? X, because these are gonna be the same length, and then Y, okay? Just for simplicity. And so now let's determine what they're trying to ask you, all right? They're trying to tell you or they want you to find the dimensions of this fence that are going to maximize this area, right? That has the large area. So you know from this statement that they want you to maximize. That's supposed to be a Z, but it's not. That looks like an E. 
maximize the area, okay? And so just straight away from here, the area of a rectangle is just the length times the width, right? So in this case, you know the area of a rectangle, right? Because they want a rectangular field is going to be x times y. So this is going to be the main function that you are eventually going to want to maximize. Very important, okay? Let's see what other equation we can get from this question, all right? Because for optimization, you need two equations to start off with, area or the equation that you're gonna maximize or minimize, and then you need one more based on the information you're given. And so in this case, they tell you that the total length of this fence is gonna be 2,400 feet, right? That's all this person that has. And so you know that the length of this side, this side, and this side are all gonna add up to 2,400, right? Because there's no fence along the river. And so based on the length of 2,400, you know that 2x, because x plus x is 2x, plus y is gonna be equal to 2,400 feet, okay? I'm not gonna put the, the units there. And this is based on the length, all right? Information that we were given in our equation. So now that you have two equations, you have one for length, you have one for area. Because area is the function that you're going to want to maximize, right? You're trying to maximize area you're gonna leave this one alone and you're not gonna modify this one until it's a function of one variable. What I mean by that is, let's go to your length equation and we're gonna simplify by solving y in terms of x, meaning we're going to move this over here and we're gonna solve for y, okay? And so now you have y, right? as a function of x, and now you're gonna plug that expression into your area equation, okay? And what that's gonna look like is this. The area is now gonna be x, right? Stays the same, multiplied by this expression, because we're plugging this in for y. Multiplied by 2400 minus 2x, right? And so now, since this equation only has x in it, right, we're going to rewrite this as a function of x, because that's what it is, is equal to, and then let's simplify, 2400x minus 2x squared, all right? So here is the equation or function that you are trying to maximize. All right, so this is it. So let's rewrite that over here so that we have room to work is 2400x minus 2x squared, right? And then now this comes in, critical values, right? So now we're gonna take the derivative of this function and using the power rule by now, we know that you're gonna find the derivative of this entire right side meaning, and I'll write it just for the sake of it, for fun, right? The derivative of the entire right side means that you're going to apply the derivative to all the terms in the expression. And based on the power rule, the derivative, the derivative of this first term is just gonna be 2400 minus the derivative of this term is gonna be 4x, right? So now you have the expression for the derivative. Now we're going to set this equation equal to zero and solve for our critical value or our x. And so we're going to move 4x to the right is equal to 2400. Now we know that x is going to be equal to 600 feet, right? Because feet is the units that the fence is in. So this is half of our answer. Now that we know x is equal to 600 feet, we can plug x back into the length equation that we solve for y to determine y. Okay, so let's do that. 
So we know that y is equal to 2400 minus 2 times x, which we know now is 600. So y is going to be 2400 minus 1200, meaning y is going to be 1200 feet. Okay. And now you've optimized the fence because you know that each side or each x is going to be 600 feet and the length y is going to be 1200 feet. Okay. And so a quick overview is that from your equation, you want to find two equations from your word problem, sorry. You want to find two equations that you can work with. Okay. The main equation that you're going to have to maximize or minimize, you don't want to modify that one first. You want to leave that one alone initially. And you want to modify your second equation, right? Solve for y in this case as a function of x. Plug that back in to the main function that you're going to work with. Once you get that as a function of x in this case, then you can find the critical value and evaluate. Okay, so optimization can be done with more than one shape. And so as a second example, I'm going to let you work on um, that problem that I'm going to pull up in a second. But just remember the flow and the logic that we're going to follow. Okay, and go ahead and give yourself a couple seconds to work on this. And then after you work on it, feel free to pause the video. We'll get back together and we will work on this together. Okay. Awesome. So let's see if what you came up with is what I came up with. All right. So first of all, let's read the problem. A cylindrical can is made to hold one liter of oil. Find the dimensions that will minimize the cost of the metal to manufacture the can. And so in this problem, they want you to minimize the cost of the metal, meaning the material. So if you're minimizing the cost of the material, you're essentially being asked to minimize the surface area, right, of the can or of the cylinder, okay? So identifying that is really key to the first step um, in this problem. And you know that the surface area for a cylinder, right, is equal to the surface area of the lids and also of the body of the can. So this is the initial hold can. If you, if you separate the lid and the body of it, these are the areas of each of those components. And you know that the surface area then of the entire can is going to be those terms added up. So two pi r times height plus two pi r squared, okay? And so this is going to be the first equation and the main one that you're going to need to, in this case, minimize. So we're not going to modify this one initially, okay? And so from our word problem, what is the second equation that we can derive from this? right? Based on the information we have, the can is meant to hold one liter of oil. So in that case, that's a volume measurement, right? So our second equation is going to come from the volume information, okay? And so we're going to convert one liter. We're going to do some unit conversion. So one liter is the same thing as a thousand cubic centimeters, okay? So this is just a unit conversion. And from that, we're going to be able to use this in a volume equation, okay? So volume of a cylinder is going to be equal to pi r 
squared times the height, okay? And so in this case, we're going to solve for height as a function of radius, okay? And so we know that the volume is gonna hold one liter or a thousand cubic centimeters. So we're gonna set the volume pi r squared h equal to the amount of oil it can hold, which we converted to a thousand cubic centimeters. And we're gonna solve for height in terms of radius. So solve for h divided by pi r squared, okay? Now we have height as a function of radius, right? And now we can plug this expression for height into the surface area equation. And so let's do that. Surface area, I'm not gonna write that cylinder part, but this is a cylinder, is equal to two pi r. H is gonna be written as a thousand over pi r squared plus two pi r squared, okay? So based on here, we're gonna cancel some stuff. So pi and pi, right? R and one of the r's here are gonna cancel, and then we're gonna be left with this. Two times a thousand is going to be two thousand over r, and be careful when you're canceling stuff, plus two pi r squared, okay? And over here, instead of writing surface area, right, I'm gonna rewrite this as a function of r, because that's what we have. And so now this is our equation that we are going to minimize, okay? Important step. And so, in order to do that, we're going to right? Critical points. We're going to take the derivative, set it equal to zero, and then evaluate. So in this case, we're going to take the derivative with respect to r of our function f of r, right? So that means we're going to take the derivative with respect, of, with respect to r of this entire right side. So 2,000 over r plus 2 pi r squared, all right? And we know that we need to distribute the derivative to every term inside of there, meaning we have d over dr of 2,000 over r plus d over dr of 2 pi r squared. All right, now let's do a little bit of contextual review, meaning what do we know? All right, 2,000 is just a number, is a constant, and we said that when we're taking derivatives, you can always move, as long as it's a coefficient, you can always move the constant out front and just multiply it by the answer you get after taking the derivative. Same thing here. Because we're taking the derivative with respect to r, anything in there that's not related to r, is a constant, and so 2 pi in this case. 2 pi is a constant, and you can move that out. So now you're gonna have 2,000 times the derivative with respect to r of one over r plus 2 pi times the derivative with respect to r of r squared. Okay, and so this is gonna be 2,000 times based on the quotient rule, and you can work this out if you'd like. I'm not going to, but if, you, if you're having trouble with that, go ahead. The derivative of one over r is gonna be negative one over r squared. Use the quotient rule if you wanna prove that to yourself, plus two pi times, using the power rule, this one's just 2r, right? Times 2r. 
So when we simplify this thing, we're going to get negative 2,000 over r squared plus 4 pi r. Okay, and this is going to be our derivative function. Now we are going to set this thing equal to zero and solve for our radius, our r. And so let's do that up here. Okay, and I'm going to change colors because it's throwing me off a little bit. So we're going to set this equal to zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to do 4 pi r minus 2,000 over r squared is equal to zero. I just reordered it so that there wasn't a negative out front. So we're going to simplify. So 4 pi r is equal to 2,000 over r squared. Multiply each side by r squared, divide each side by 4 pi. You're going to get r to the third is equal to 2,000 divided by 4 pi. Okay, and so cube is equal to 500 over pi. Your r is going to end up being the cube root of 500 over pi. Okay. That is your half of your answer. Okay. Now that we solve for our radius, put this back into the volume equation that we had to solve for the height. Right. So now you know that the height is equal to 1000 over pi instead of r we're going to put this entire expression q root of 500 over pi squared right right from here and that is going to be your optimized can of oil okay so again quick rundown we looked at our word problem we drew it out for ourselves whenever possible right and then based on our initial question in this case they were asking us to minimize the surface area of the cylinder that was our first equation that we had right surface area of a cylinder and since this is the function that we needed to minimize we did not modify this initially we found a second equation using the volume information we were given. We solved for height in terms of r. So we got h as a function of r and plugged it back into our main surface area equation, got our function in terms of r, and then found and evaluated the critical values. Okay? And so if you were able to follow, Good job. If you weren't, totally fine. Go back and look at uh, parts where you may have needed help. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Um, and this was optimization.